اصطفى آدم ونوحا وآل إبراهيم وآل عمران على العالمين ذرية بعضها من بعض والله سميع عليم إذ قالت امرأة عمران رب إني نذرت لك ما في بطني محررا فتقبل مني إنك أنت السميع العليم If you remember uh, just uh, in two verses before this we had the idea of استفاء of Adam and Nuh and Al Ibrahim and Al Imran. Now why Al Imran was singled out from Al Ibrahim and specifically was mentioned because Allah now wants to recount the story of Al Imran who of course uh, were the family of Jesus, peace be on him. And this is in conversation with the uh, Christians of Najran. So when the wife of Imran, wife of Imran, they say that the name of uh, wife of Imran was Hannah or Anna. And uh, she was, uh, she had a sister whose name was uh, Isha or Elisha or Elizabeth, Elisabeth or Elizabeth. Well, it's well known in, in, in Christian literature as Elizabeth. Now, these two sisters were married to two prophets. One was Imran, who had passed away by this time when Allah is actually giving us the story of wife of Imran. Imran has passed away. And then the other sister had married to Zakaria. And we know that Zakaria later on became father of Yahya or John. And uh, the, uh, the daughter of Hannah uh, or Hannah, Maryam, she gave birth to Jesus. My Lord, I dedicate it to you what is in my womb, what is in my belly, in consecration. Now, the term she uses here denotes that she is on the assumption that what she is carrying is a boy. Because he says, إِنِّي نَذَرَتُ لَكَ مَا فِي بَطْنِ مُحَرَّرًا Not مُحَرَّرَةً مُحَرَّرًا means, of course, consecrated, free from any obligation, just freed for your service. And some say that this was a custom, that uh, sometimes the, the parents freed their child from every obligation and let him just to uh, uh, focus on worship or if, of course, in younger ages, they send them to the uh, to, to Kanisa or, or to the temple to do just small chores in the temple as a service of the temple. And this was only for boys, not for girls, of course. Boys were sent there. They remained there until they came to the age of uh, maturity, to the age when they, they could decide for themselves and then decided what to do. Why was she of the assumption that she was going to give birth to a son? Is because Allah had revealed to Imran. And Imran had revealed to his wife before his death that God is going to give us a son. And of course, God had not uh, uh, clarified whether it's an immediate son or a grandson or what. So he was of the assumption that it is an immediate son, while it wasn't. Uh, so the assumption she had was that Imran had said, God has promised me he will give me a son who will uh, revive the dead, who will cure the diseased and uh, do all those miracles. So, because Imran to Imran 
had actually first of all she was uh, she was in a, an old age and she was barren she couldn't give birth to child and since Allah had blessed him with such a thing and since Imran had told her had blessed her with such a, and Imran had told her that you are going to uh, to be given we are going to be give, given a son with those blessings so she made that nadr inni nadartu laka ma fi batni muharrara fataqabbal minni so you accept from me taqabbal minni of course it means that i may not be that pure that uh, uh, this is a sign of humbleness isn't it i may not be that pure to deserve your acceptance but you accept from me you hear what I say and Alim you know what is in my heart so after making the this pledge this nadr okay time passed and she gave birth and to her surprise, when she gave birth, she said, My Lord, I have born a female. It means, what about my nazar? What about what Imran said? And certainly, of course, she realized that maybe this was not going to come through to this immediate birth. Maybe it would come through this girl, the the pledge that Allah, the, the promise that Allah had given to Imran will come through in children of this uh, female, this girl. So, but that was not a point of concern. The point of concern was about the, the nazar that she had made. They, they did not let uh, girls into the temple. So, فَلَمَّا وَضَعَتْهَا قَالَتْ رَبِّ إِنِّي it's just somehow seeking uh, pardon from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I made this this nazar, I made this vow, but now it is something which is out of my hand. What can I do? Now, there is a sort of uh, interjection by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here. Something in bracket. This is what Allah says. Because the story is just given to us uh, from the mouth of uh, Hannah. However, in the middle, Allah is saying something. Wallahu a'lamu bima wadarat. Or read it like this. Wallahu a'lamu bima wadarat. No one knows what she had given birth to except Allah. If you say Allah knows better, what she had given birth to, well, that's of course, that's obvious. Allah knows better everything. But if we say, Wallahu a'lamu, only Allah knows what she gave birth to. Only Allah knows the position of that girl, the position of Maryam. As, as later on we will see what happens to Maryam, how she grows, how she communicates with angels. No one knows what she gave birth to. And this was uh, a prelude to the birth of Jesus. Al-Dhakar, of course, is, is male, Al-Unsa, female. Now here commentators have tried to make sense of what does that mean? Laysa al al unsa the, the, the male is not like female and they have gone into details about the difference between male and female but this doesn't want to say that this al in dakar al al in unsa is for ahd that means is referring us to something that we already know or we are already talking about we are talking about maryam 
being a female and we are talking about a son being a male who was expected because of the uh, uh, prophecy of Imran so this Azakar means that male and an Unsa means that female or this female so as I said this is just in brackets by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only Allah knows what she gave birth to in terms of her qualities her position among human race her loftiness in the spiritual only Allah knows that and the male that you were expecting would have never been like this, this female apparently Jesus needed a mother purer than Hannah well Hannah was very pure Hannah was wife of Imran the prophet Hannah gave birth to Maryam Hannah devoted her child to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but Jesus needed a mother purer than that and that's why it didn't get as an immediate child as an immediate son of Hannah it came as a son of Maryam who Allah purified fully and completely so this life of the karokal untha here means that female that male that you are expecting would never have been like this female this female is uh, in her qualities this is the only female who can give birth to Jesus but here despite the fact that uh, she was a girl and she knew that it is almost impossible to to have her admitted into the temple later on for uh, for service still she said in hope or in fulfillment of her nazar wa anni sammaytuha maryam i name her Maryam. Maryam means servant, of course servant of God. Or another meaning, Maryam means Abida, that the one who, the, the, she who worships, Abida, she who worships. So Anisa Maytuha Maryam means that despite being a girl, I want her to be dedicated to you, either in service in temple or as an Abida, as a worshipper of you and maybe this this may actually uh, support the idea that uh, that nazar was about just dedicating fully someone for the religion of God learning teaching and everything else I don't want any service from them I don't want anything that, that they should give me back I only want them to give back your blessings some of your blessings to the people so what any some to her Maryam now if I have called her Maryam then she should be very pure I will try my best to teach her if they admit her to the temple of course the rabbis would try their best but still it is you who have to save her and the one son that she is going to give birth to why because Imran had told her that that son will come Allah will give us that son now Hannah realizes that the son should come from this girl either immediately or even with, with some mediation later on so I commend her and her offspring to your care against the outcast shaitan first of all I want you to protect her you know this is something which is out of our hands at, at certain stage we know many children who 
go uh, against their parents in their in their way especially we know children coming from very very holy families which eventually end up in disbelief we have this in in family of prophets we have this in family of imams so if that is the case it's not all in my hand i do my best but it is you who have to save her i commend her and her offspring that means that even Hannah knows that this girl and later on her offspring must be very pure, must be free from any deviation, any deception of shaitan. So I commend her to your care, to your protection against a shaitan rajim. Rajim is outcast, driven away because shaitan was driven away from uh, from the vicinity of God, from where he was uh, stationed in the realm of angels. He, that's why he was rajim, outcast, driven away. Uh, and shaitan, of course, uh, may not be only Iblis. Shaitan is actually an attribute which could be given to a, to a man and to a jinn. Could be given to Iblis and could be given to, uh, to other creatures. Like for example, وَإِذَا عَلَقُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا أَمَنَّا At the beginning of Surah Baqarah وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَىٰ شَيَاطِينَهِمْ قَالُوا إِنَّا مَعَكُمْ when they see the believers, they say we believe, but when they private, privately meet their shayateen, now these shayateen were not jinn, of course, they were human beings, mushrikun of Mecca or some of the Jews in Medina, these are al-naqa shayateen. Now here, of course, shaitan rajim usually refers to Iblis, because he is the one who was, uh, uh, who was driven away, expelled from that high lofty position. However, shaitan itself can be uh, an attribute of anyone. <laughs>